I will shalom Rastafari. I think this is probably part four. We thought we could just do a little vid, you know, just touching on um, um, Hosa'ina, right? Hosa'ina, actually speaking with the earthly. And she remi- remem- reminded me of it because within the Western churchical sense, you know, uh, to, to this new light, which is Sunday or Ehud, is going to be a Hosa'ina or Palm Sunday, right, where they brought out the palms, right, and where they laid their, their garments, you understand, in the, in, in, in the pathway. They laid down their clothes. I mean, think about that for a moment. Since so many of the lost sheep actually worship their clothes and their shoes. Think about it, right? They laid it down as he rode upon the donkey. Now, I always wonder why did Yeshua ride on the donkey? Like, what, what was significant about this ass or this donkey, right? You know, remember Balaam, the talking ass? But if you go a little bit deeper, right, into ancient Kemet, you will see that Seth or Sut or Shut or, you know, Shet, right, is really an ass, right? So, sort of like he's like a donkey head, an ass head, right? You know, um, so there is uh, in Kokalish, there's like a riddle within it, but it's all line upon line, um, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little, it, it all fits. You don't have to make up anything. All you have to do is seek it out because the glory, you know, of God to hide a thing but it's the honor of kings, as well as queens, sisters, to search out a matter. So we had left off at the Kuta Asra'an of Psalm 68, right, which I like to call the Ark of the Covenant Psalm and the Ethiopian Ark of the Covenant Psalm because the first words, let Jah arise, make his enemies be scattered, make them also that hate him, all the haters of the king of kings, flee before him. Right? They can laugh and joke and be dismissive now, but who's going to be dismissed later? You know, that's the real question, right? And who's going to be dismissed to the alligator or to the Amit, the, Am, the Amwat, right, that, that composite monster, right, within the judgment hall scene, right? Because we're coming into judgment. This is the end of this Gentile world age. But it's on the grace of the King of Kings in Yeshua. For I and I, his creatures and his sons and daughters, his children. Because Babylon already fell. You just don't recognize it yet. It's only the grace of the Almighty that, that, that keeps it seemingly going on. You understand? So that more sons and daughters can, can come to life and can come out of her. Right? Come out of Babylon. So we was talking about the harlot programming that they're trying to assault the black woman with. Right? And it seems, it seems... It seems that they're being successful because, remember, the original sin, the khat'iyat, the original lacking, or what caused lacking was thinking that they were lacking, but that was disobedience and not paying attention, which is the price of the truth. Now, Adonai, he gave the word, right? Great, and this is speaking of us, great was the company, right? The company of those that publish it. So what are we to be about? You understand? The publishing of the word. You understand? And the publishing of the word, according to the gifts, you know, the varied gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know, whether one is a, a, a doctor or a teacher or, or one who is of Torah, the law, or if one is a imabait, or if one is a farmer, Yovas, you know, or if one is, is, is an artist or a musician or an theater or theater, whatever particular level, is still about publishing the word and the word of truth, right? It's, it's, it's according to the wisdom, receiving that wisdom or that know-how, you understand, to put across the truth, whether within one's art, whether within one's labor of love, so forth and so on. Uh, it says, kings of armies that flee apace. Now, these kings, remember we're talking about the seven kings, the eight kings, this pope, that pope, the two horned popes, you know what I mean, um, the horny popes there. But it says, kings of armies, kings of the earth, come to yourself. They did flee apace. And she, right, she that tarried at home divided the spoil, the merco, the spoil. You understand, the spoil was like when the soldiers went out and they brought home the treasures of their enemies 
is she the Emma bait that tarried at home that divided the spoil? So it's showing the true structure of the house and the family. Babylon says you got to be a, 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 a carrier, you know, saying a care, put your care to the rear sort of a person, right? You have to be a career person, but they trick you. They just want you to work on their plantations. You understand? They want you to work on their plantation, and so this new form of slavery. We're still in this house of the bond age. Right, the house of the bond age. So it says, Though ye have lion among the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver. Covered and silver, remember, is the redemption, right? It's a, it's a medal of redemption. And her feathers with yellow gold. Now it's interesting, this, this whole um, metaphor is very. It's very commenting. It, it, it comes from that mystery that Musa was learned in. Remember, it was Yahweh who called Moses from within the Meganania Dinquan, the tent of the media, the tent of the meeting. Media is very, very important because the means of common unification or communication. If we depend on others to communicate, this just is what divides and conquers us through all of these, these kind of um, programs, right? Um, give I and I the teaching of his magic. God, we don't want no devil's philosophy. Now, I and I would love to go further in this, but this hopefully will be a good foundation to give the Schofield Study Bible. There's a footnote here which speaks about how the entire mesmore is pervaded by this one central theme, and that is the, the joy of Israel in the kingdom. Ye Israel desita be mengist, right? And, and be mengistu. Not that other guy, but the true mengist. Not the one that had the name, but then we live up to the truth of the name, but the true, the true kingdom. All right. You could die in there. All right. But a stricter order of events begins with verse 18. Now, we're not up to that, but this is also speaking of the regathering of Israel. It's speaking of Christos, the Moshiach's ascension ministry, right? Um, remember, as for the Son, so for the Father. Because the Father has visited us because the Son has made that way and brought forward that grace so that the Father could visit you understand, without destroying humanity in their hot yacht, in their lacking, in their sin, right? But he came to shorten those days for I and I and for the elect. So the destruction of the beast and his armies are also connected in this regathering or ingathering, and we call this the Sukkot, right, as we look forward to Sukkot or tabernacles, right, as tabernacles. So we have the Moedim. Right, the, the annual Shabbat, like the Pesach, right, the Passover coming forward from the 25th to the to um, April uh, 2nd, right? Those particular seven days, the first and the last, are are Kiddush, and they are Senbets or Shabbat days, right? And remember, it, remember the Shabbat. Remember, so it's not about the do do don't do do, but it begins with the mind. Right? Like on Rastafari, we say higher heights, going to the higher heights. You know what I'm Not having a carnal mind, but overstanding these things iritically or spiritually. So now we're going to get a fuller description in this very psalm of the universal, the true universal kingdom barakat, the true kingdom blessing. Now, Satan has tried to counterfeit that barakat, they call it the benedict. Right? They try to counterfeit the universal, they call it the Catholicos. They try to counterfeit the Mengist, they call it the Basilica. Uh, you got it? All right. So let's go forward with Jeremiah just to sum this up right here in this particular um, portion. And y'all willing through this uh, Pesach Fasica from the, from the Hebraic because it's that crossing over, ready, the people becoming ready, prepped. This is the spiritual preparation. So we have Hosanna as part of that spiritual preparation. So it's interesting when I was reading in, in, in Jeremiah 23 and 4, and I had went into a little more details because in verse 7 it says, chapter 23, it says, Therefore, Silazi, ergo, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, Yodhei, Wauhei, 
that they shall no more say Yahweh Hai, Yahai, Jalith. Right? Jalith, that's what the Lord liveth, Yahai, or Hai, Yah, Hai, Yahweh, Hai, Yah, Hai, Yahweh, which brought up the children of Israel. Now, who are the children of Israel like according to the Father? Like the children of the Ethiopians, Amos 9 and 7. Now, some folks don't say, oh, that only means because the blacks over the. Oh, you going to speak for the Father? Well, the Holy Spirit shows I and I greater and more wonderful things. Hallelujah. Amen. But no longer will they say that Jalib, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's what we say. Keep saying spiritual Egypt, spiritual Egypt. So no one thinks, oh, America's Egypt. No, spiritual Egypt. So in order to understand that, you have to understand that spiritually. Kutar Sementa says, but Negrigin, they're going to say, Yahai or Hiyaw Egziavi Harin which brought up and which led that Jalif, who brought up, he's bringing I and I up in the Torah, in the way of the king of kings, now true to Wahido, the teaching of his majesty, and which led the seed, the zar, the race of the house of Israel, and that is referring to the ethnic Hebrews, or we black people, so-called Negroes, the Ethiopian Hebrews, which led the seed, the zar, of the house of Israel from where? Out of the north country. Uh, duh, like what, what could it be speaking about in the Rai prophetically? See, that's why when you read in Revelation chapter 5, it speaks about the book of the seven seals, and furthermore, it speaks about the ingathering of Israel, the 144,000, and then it speaks about the Zion, or Mount Zion, or the African Zion. Now, when we said Satan is a counterfeit, and now they're trying to talk about, you know, um, some Zion and Popal, you know, thing going on. You understand? Um, you know, watch and pray, but stay in Jah's way. Right, don't go astray. So it says that, that they're going to say that Jah live, and this is the root, the crux for our Seder, right, that Jah live. Make this your meditation over these uh, seven or so days, and even your itinual meditation that Jah, he lives. In spite of all this other death and the death cult and everything is, you know what I mean, you can see it if you have eyes to see, which brought up, right, that Jah, he, he's living. You know, saying John lived children, yeah, which brought up, who brought up, and who led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. So it's about the Ethiopian. It is about black people. And that's always showing the Pope thing and the sea and this African head and the Kaput Ethiopicum, right? And then um, Tacitus talks about in the Tisha B'Av, 70 A.D., he talks about the Ethiopicum problem that the Jews of that time were of the race of the Ethiopians, thus they were Africans, thus they were black, and thus the discrimination and the persecution of them, you understand, is going to have a, a soon and a sudden judgment. So we hope that even these Jews who call themselves Jews, that they repent before it's too late. Because if God's not willing that any should perish, then we are not willing. But if they, if they are not willing to make their wills obedient to good influences, then so be, Jah will. And from all countries, all of the countries, whither I had driven them. So this gets us off of this little fleshy, fleshy thing, the white man, and recognize that the black man's problem is the God problem, not the white man's problem, that even the white man is not even the devil, he's become the devil's tool, right, a tool, right? So he has driven us into these other countries, but they, speaking of we, I and I and I, shall dwell in our own land. They shall dwell in their own land. Now, that's, that's, that is the, 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 the Seder or the Sir'at renewed for I and I in this prophetic space and time. Now, I don't have the opportunity right now, though we still might touch on it, what a feet, what a feet. That means in the forward, forward ever, backward uh, never. Um, Luke chapter 19 uh, and 30. I just remember 1930. You know, saying 1930. That was a good year, right? That was the acceptable year. And it's interesting when you um, read within that psalm, I think was it 71, 72, where it says, um, where it says, Bezemenu Eunet Tababalech. In his zemin, in his age, in his visitation, truth, ilnet, tababalech, that ilnet would, would sprout up, would, would bud, 
right? Like, like, like a flower, like a rose, like Adis Ababa, right? So we can just observe the contrast right there. You understand? Know so